Hi there, this is Sheena Rowlands and today I'm sharing with you my latest layout for Hey Little Magpie store featuring Coco Vanilla Studio Storyteller range. In particular, this is the Brighter Days paper. What's not to love about a Coco Vanilla Studio rainbow? So I'm using my scoring board here and I'm scoring every half inch on this side and then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do every half inch on the other side in between. So when it's finally done, it's going to be scored every quarter of an inch. As you can see there, I've done that off camera because it did take me a little bit of time. And then I've trimmed it into three inch strips. So each strip is actually 12 inches long, but by the time you concertina it down, it makes it much shorter. If you wanted a pinwheel that was um, twice the width, six inches wide, you would need two sheets of pattern paper to do that. So using some very strong red tape, I've joined them together in a circle, uh, making sure that the colours match as you go round. So I've added red to red and blue to blue. So I've got two uh, circles that I've punched from cardstock there on the right. The big one I've covered in strong double-sided tape and that's going to be the base for the pinwheel. So I'm just at the moment just trying to get it uh, manipulated into the right shape. And that does take some practice. And I have to be honest, there's times when I wish I had three hands. But if you could just breathe through it, it will work. The double sided tape, I added a little bit of wet glue to that as well. And it's not far off. Now, um, it will keep popping back up for a bit, but you just need to keep putting pressure on it. Uh, while you get it into the right shape. What I did do with the smaller circle is I popped that flat in the middle of the pinwheel just to give me an idea how uh, circular I'd managed to get everything. So I'd use that as a guide when I was pushing it in on the bottom. So over the top of that I've added some foam pads in the centre and another circle. That's just to add complete stability for when it dries. I did leave it overnight with uh, a book on top just to make it completely solid. So I've come in with my photo here. It's a family photograph, so it's full of colour. I thought it would be perfect to go on this rainbow pinwheel. And the flowers in this range are just wonderful. And I'm going to just layer those following the colours of the pinwheel. So the blue flowers are over the blue and go out to the ready pinks either side. So um, I've got some of those out of the packet and I've laid them on at the moment. Nothing stuck down. If you know me and watch my videos before, it takes quite a bit before I commit to anything. So I'm just now trimming one of the papers from the 6x8 pad and I've added like a little journaling card either side of the actual photograph. And I'm just going through the ephemera that I've got as well just to see if there's anything that I like. I particularly like the banner piece. And that's definitely going to stay there above the photograph. And I'm now looking at the pattern papers in the smaller pad just to see if I wanted to map the photo. And I chose the yellow in the end just to add another layer. I also decided to back the whole layout with the back of the Ditsy Daisy, which is the blue. So on the cardstock, which is now uh, 11 inches wide, I've drawn round a circle about the same size as my pinwheel. And I'm going to work my way round just doing some uh, paint splatters in the same colours as the pinwheel. So <laughs> if that makes sense, so I'm going to do blues, blues at the top, then greens coming down to reds that across the centre line. I drew the circle in pencil first because it gave me an idea that actually because where I wanted the splatters to be because I don't know about you, but every time I do mixed media recently, I then end up covering the whole thing back up. So by having the pencil line there, it gave me an idea where they were. So when I'd finished with the paint splatters, I put that to one side and I decided to start to build the layout back up on top of the pinwheel itself rather than um, wait for the paint to dry. So I've added the photograph there, which I've matted with the yellow and popped the uh, little card in either side. Uh, definitely going to add that bunting on some foam pads just to raise it up. But I am conscious that this layout already has at least quarter of an inch of depth from the pinwheel itself so uh, I do bear that in mind when I start to raise some of these flowers up as well. I'm trimming the leaves off most of them because then I'm going to tuck those back in underneath so I'm just going through just making sure that I haven't missed any that I would like to use. It's a nice big cluster uh, of colour but uh, these flowers are just too good to uh, not put on. 
and I think they go really well with the um, pinwheel. Just move the photo up there a little bit before I finally stick, commit and stick things down just to actually even things up because I want the colour to show all the way through. So I'm just layering them out, starting with the blues in the centre, then yellows either side, and then pinks, and then goes to red. So do check out this range in the store. Really impressed that it's got a really nice shade of dark blue in it, um, which you don't often get in scrapbooking ranges, I I've noticed. And I, I, for one, wear a lot of blue, so I really like blue to be in a scrapbook range. So... Um, do check it out. I think the whole range is in the store. There was also a deal the way you could order it beforehand. So I know that uh, Sarah got lot, a lot of it in because she knew how popular it would be. So uh, do have a look at that. So I think I'm nearly there with getting things stuck down and hopefully the paint on the background is uh, nearly dry as well. So then I can actually uh, crack on and get this finished. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel because there's always going to be more videos um, coming up uh, over the next um, coming weeks. So I think I've finished uh, messing about now. I've just added a few leaves in. And off camera, I brought in the base with the paint. It's all completely dry and I've placed the pinwheel over it so I can see how it's going to look. I know that it's not that easy to see the paint at this distance, but when you see the close-ups, I really like the way that it looks. So I've added one of the black foam titles. It says together, as I say, not as clear as it should be from this distance, but it's when you see the uh, finished layout it is. And uh, it just adds a little bit more depth there across those flowers. Just seeing if there's any bits that I mi I've missed, anything else that I want to add, because there's so many bits and pieces in this range to look at. I really like that yellow camera, so I'm going to tuck that in there. And then I th realised that I've not actually journaled on this at all, so I've got a little journaling piece there on the left. And I'm going to add just the date and place to that, just uh, for my records. So uh, last piece, I think, I'm just going to add this little banner underneath the title, uh, because I really do love this when we all get together. So I'm now going to use some strong tape to stick this to the painted cardstock because um, obviously it's quite weighty now with all those embellishments on it too. And now I've joined that to the back cardstock as well. So this is the full image. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again here soon. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Bye for now.